So you never streamed D&D before, but you want to know where to start. Well, I'm here to help you. Streaming D&D is an extremely rewarding experience for yourself, your players, and your audience. There's four types of D&D streams. There are avatar streams, face cam streams, live action streams, and podcast streams. For more info on those streams, I left a link in the description to a video where I cover all of them in depth. Yes, technically this is the second video in that series. But for this video, we are going to just focus more on the avatar stream. So sit back, get those creative juices flowing, and get ready, because today we're going to be making an overlay. Hi, I'm Mikey, or some of you know me on Twitch, DMetagame. I've been streaming D&D on Twitch for a little bit over two years, and I really wish that I had some sort of video guide that could help teach me how to grow and evolve on Twitch. That's why at this point in the video, I ask that you like, comment, subscribe, and share this video, as it really helps me evolve and grow this channel so that I can provide more content and I can cover more topics within the D&D livestream community. Now, before we begin today's video, let's come up with a definition for what an avatar stream is. No, you're not going to have to master all four elements. Only one element. Adobe Photoshop elements. Yep, that's right. As the name would suggest, an avatar stream is going to very heavily focus on the graphics aspect of the stream. We're going to use something called reactive images to make it so that the players appear to be talking through some sort of avatar to give some sort of roleplay-esque illusion to those watching the stream. You're essentially going to turn all of your players into either VTubers if you want to get really advanced, or just PNG tubers if you want to do it nice, sweet, and simple. Now, what do you need to make this kind of stream happen? Honestly, you really only need a microphone. Although, due to the nature of D&D, a second monitor will practically be a requirement. And a third monitor, well, that would just make your life a lot easier. You don't even need a webcam. Due to the way that we're going to wire the PNG tubers to work, you don't need any facial tracking at all. All you need is just your voice. Let me give you an example of how this works. This is a clip from one of my Twitch streams. The, the ship? Oh yeah, there's a giant hole! Wow! <laughs> okay. You can see that every time a player talks, there's an avatar that represents them on the bottom. In this case, the avatar is actually their character art. This was accomplished by using something called reactive images. And I'm going to show you a link down below, which is going to take you to a video where I explain how to use them. Now, we're going to want to start with the reactive images before anything else, because then we have an idea what size they're going to be and how we could fit them properly into the overlay. We'll also have an idea on the art style that they're going to have and what kind of art style will fit the overlay that we're going to create. So go ahead and create one new browser source for every single player in your game. Each of them should look exactly like it does on the screen, except the codes for each player will be different and also the images. Now let's look at the art style of the guy who I just threw up on the screen. It looks pretty cool if you ask me. And he's got this very basic color style about him. He has very bold outlines and the shading is very simple. So when we create our overlay, we're going to want to make it something based around that. Something that's going to be really fitting. Now to accomplish this, we're going to use something called vector based artwork, which is one of the most simple things to edit in the world. Now there's two solid ways you could handle this. The first way is to make the whole thing vector-based, following that very simple pattern. Or what you could do is you could make an abstract background with a vector profile in which the characters will be inserted, because that way it is still going to carry a little bit of that consistency in the art style. But it does also have that really cool and catchy appeal on the outside in the background. I'll show you what I mean. Now go ahead and open Photoshop or really any photo editor. We're not going to be using anything that's exclusive to Photoshop here. And we're going to set the proportions to be 1920 by 1080, just like your standard overlay for Twitch. Now we're going to go online and we're going to go and find some sort of vector background. You could just find that on Google, but find something that's going to represent the theme that you want to go with. I'm going to step a little bit out of my comfort zone. We're going to go with, uh, how about maybe like a construction theme with the yellow and the black. I also found a little box that I'll use for the profile pictures and this green rectangle over here, which we're going to use to resize. This is going to be where roll 20 is going to show up on the screen or a virtual tabletop 
or Tabletop Simulator, or Fantasy Grounds. Whichever one you prefer to use. Now, we're going to line it up closer to the top of the page. You don't really have to be exact with this, but you want to get it so that it's not cutting off the top, but it's pretty close to that. That way there's enough room under it. Now, you could put it on the left side, or you could put it on the right side. I've seen most streamers put it on the right side, or in some cases, the middle. But, but since we're going with a simple and generic one, we're going to go in the middle to the right. Then we're gonna make one more box. That box is gonna be a little bit smaller and the purpose of this box is going to be we're gonna put the chat for Roll20 in there, which in this case is going to show all of the rolls that happen during the stream. Once you have the two boxes, go ahead and delete that space from every single layer. And then it should look something like this. Now this isn't necessary, but I really do like having some sort of background for all of the PNG tubers that we're going to be using. This just makes all the lower thirds that we're going to be using, such as whether you're using health bars or character names or anything like that, it makes it display a lot cleaner. So now I'm going to take this box that I found on the internet that matches the brand, and I'm going to resize it until it is to my liking. And I'm going to make several copies of it, one for each of the players that I'm going to have, and another one for me. For this design, we're going to put me at the top left, and the players at the very bottom. Once you have them spaced apart enough for your liking, then go ahead and put the DM box up in the top. If you want, you could play a little bit around with the filters with the DM box to make it look a little bit different than the player boxes, but again, that's not really necessary. And now we could go ahead and do our lower thirds. This is the information that we can display anywhere we want on the stream. In this case, because we have the portraits, why not put them there? So you could go ahead, you could put any kind of text. Uh, if you want to put the player's name or maybe the character's name, there's a ton of different information you can display. If you're going to be using health bars, you could put that either on the bottom or the top of these little profile boxes. Generally, you only want to put two pieces of information on here, something on the top and something on the bottom. There are a couple of clever ways to get around it, which I could definitely show in future videos. But for now, we're just sticking with the basics. So go ahead and position everything exactly where you want it to be when the stream is live. Some other things you might want to display besides a player name could be class, possibly even race, the player's Twitter handle, maybe their Twitch handle, any piece of information that you think might help improve the stream. The purpose of this box is not for the players to see, but rather the audience. So think from their perspective. Now notice that gap in between the player and DM boxes. There's tons of information you could display there, such as the logo, channel icon, even a slideshow of all the character info or advertisements. Whatever you can think of. Now for the next part, we're going to copy all of the text for the lower thirds. And once you copy them, create a brand new image with the exact same dimensions. And when you open that, just paste all of that information onto the screen. Paste it in the exact same position that it was in. This is because we're going to layer it so that it shows up over your character's avatars. Delete the bottom white background on both of them. Save them both as PNGs, and then it's time to import. Now, back in OBS, we're going to go and we're going to layer this properly. So first, put an image source in. This is going to serve as the base for the overlay. Now, let's make a second image source. This is going to be for the lower thirds. And the reason being is that we want the talking heads to show up on top of the first overlay layer, but under the layer of the text. Otherwise, the text will be completely blocked by the avatar. Keep in mind that the PNG tubers will not actually show up at all unless the said player is in Discord. Then, for the final layer, we're going to put Roll20, or whatever software you use to run the game. This is just going to be a simple window capture. So go ahead, target the window that you want that's going to have Roll20, or whatever software you are using. Now you want to center it, so the player's names aren't showing up at the bottom, the menu on the left isn't seen, the top window is cut off, and the right side of the screen is also cut off. You could do this by simply resizing, and also don't forget, you can hold Alt while you resize to crop. Once you're done and you have it exactly how you want it, 
then you're gonna copy it and you're gonna paste it one more time. Then hold Alt down to crop it and make it the same size as that little awkward shaped rectangle on the side. Go ahead, resize that so the numbers look a little bit bigger and that's it. You just made your first D&D overlay. Now again, that little area on the left, there's a lot you could do with that. You could put a slideshow with all of the character stats. You could put your logo for your channel or even the logo of the name of the show. There's a lot of leeway. I leave that open so you can kind of experiment with it and you could find something that's gonna make it more yours. Even so, this is just the style that I normally do. It's kind of like a basic model. There are so many things that you can do when we're talking in avatar style stream. I mean, your imagination is the only thing limiting you here. This is the style of D&D stream that has been growing the most over the past year. And as Twitch and VTubing as a concept grows, this only has more and more staying power. In the future, I will do other videos of avatar style streams. But for now, you're ready to go. All you have to do is just hit play. And of course, gather all of your members in Discord at the same time and move all their avatars around so that they're in the right place when the stream starts. But come on, you're a DM, that's easy. But that's gonna wrap it up for this video. If you like this content, then again, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. If you have a request for a new video that you want me to do in the future, then please comment down below or join the Discord server and even tell me directly.